I don't know about you, but I get really excited about this time of year, especially with Halloween right around the corner. Me too! And it's a perfect time for some gaming. And as you know, I love my horror games. Well, in that case, let's check out some spooky games from our Nintendo Switch collection. Well, let's go roll. I think you outdid yourself this time. You, this set decoration is pretty, uh, it's unusual for us. Well, I wanted to create mystery and intrigue. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sure did, so. Well, then mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing today again? Okay, that was bad because we already know what we're doing. Let's talk about Bendy and the Ink Machine. This game I had heard about, obviously, uh, before it even came to the Nintendo Switch. I believe it came on PC first, right? That's a good question. Yeah, I think so. Because <laughs> I, <laughs> I remember hearing about it. And I remember, like, I was so interested because of the art style. And it was this, like, new developer. And it was just... Yeah, obviously they're going for the whole Mickey Mouse thing, but making it creepy. And like 1930s cartoon. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, it, right away I was like, well, I need to get this game. And uh, the physical was, as you can see right here, is like only at GameStop. And so Yeah, it was actually published by um, Game Trust, I think, which is the GameStop um, publishing company. Yeah, so I actually thought it was going to be a lot more rare. So I think I picked it up like right away as soon mm -hmm. as it came out because I wasn't sure how many copies were going to be there. And then I also thought that this game was going to be a little bit more kid friendly. And I'm not saying it's not totally kid friendly but it was scarier than I expected. Yeah, so I actually saw this at PAX first. You know, it was like mm -hmm. a playable demo that people were yeah, playing. So I got to see that and uh, I didn't get to play it because it was a long line. I guess a lot of people were excited about this game, but you know, all you saw is the yellow, the ink, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, you're running around with a pipe and then you have enemies, the ink enemies, right? So. I was very fascinated by this game. I thought um, I actually liked it. I thought it was maybe a little bit buggy. I don't know if that's the port to console or, or you know, but just, um, yeah, I had a great time with that. I thought it was really, really fun. I know that for me, I know that since I started, I did play this on the Xbox. I just have the, that last achievement of collecting all those soup cans. And that is It's brutal. a bit glitchy, the soup cans. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. true. That's brutal. But I think it's a fantastic game. I think it is a great uh, horror game, too. Yeah, it, it is spooky for sure. Yeah, it's not like it kind of starts you off slow and then suddenly you just you realize something's not quite how it should be. So Right, and there's definitely some chasing moments. There's hiding. I love all of that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, if you haven't played this, I, I definitely recommend yeah, buying it on Switch. You know, it's on. I think it's on every console. Let's have a look at the next game here, and that's the Coma Recut. This uh, didn't come out on every console. I think this might be only on the Nintendo Switch. So I'm not sure if you know if it came out on PlayStation. I'm not actually sure, but um, I played it on Xbox first mm -hmm. and really enjoyed it. It was one of those cult classics, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I would say around 2015, and they remastered it uh, a couple years later. And uh, yeah, you play as the student in an abandoned school and you just have to like hide from the enemy enemies. I don't want to spoil too much if yeah. you haven't played it, but it's like a 2D side scroller. You know, it's, it's not quite a survival horror, but it's, it's definitely like a hide and seek kind of thing. Well, uh, not like hide and seek. But, and some you know. running as well. Yeah. And like there you can even get poisoned i think yeah you can too. get poisoned so you have to like go to a vending machine to get mm -hmm. um yeah health boosts or like just uh to yeah prevent you getting poisoned because you can actually die yeah, yeah it's not like just an adventure game it's you can you can get uh yeah stung by monsters and yeah there's someone chasing you and so yeah, yeah. No, i i was I think you actually brought up this game to me mm -hmm. um, and then I played it um, all the way through and yeah I really liked it and I'm actually excited to play the sequel that I just got as well but yeah. 
again, I think it was only a Nintendo Switch for both of them, which... Um, for the physical version. For physical, it, yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you can play it on you know, Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah, but, consoles, uh, yeah. but that's why it's like this... Um, and I really like the cover of this game, too. It's yeah, really no, cool. It's really cool. And it's like set in the Korean school. So you're like navigating around the school and you have to kind of memorize a bit, too, on the map of like, where's the PE room and where's the science yeah. room? Because you're going to have to find your way to these rooms in order to make your way out in a sense but like make it out safely yeah and i just remembered actually it's one of those you can only save at like the blackboards and uh -huh. stuff you can't save there's no auto save so mm -hmm. yeah you could argue that this is probably a survival horror game but it might not be in the traditional sense of what most people associate with it but um definitely uh yeah you don't really know what's going on what's going to happen at any given time and you kind of see it's the school over time changing and stuff so yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. Great, great game though I, I highly recommend it yeah let's take a look at another cult classic doki doki literature club and this is the plus version this game's unassuming obviously i think by now a lot of people probably know about this game but you can even see here on the back it does say enter the number one psychological horror experience and I think that it still gets underestimated even with the amount of press on this game or that people talk about it and it's pink and it's got these cute <laughs> girls on it. And I still think I underestimated it a bit of like that this would be a psychological horror game. And it it's not in the typical sense. That's why I think psychological is probably the right term to look, for, you know, use for it. Absolutely, yeah. And I, you know, just... Um you, unassuming is the right word yeah because you start off if you played any visual novel yeah. starts off in a school and like that yeah. typical background you see and these girls popping up and mm -hmm. yeah you really have no idea until you've played quite a bit in the story that this is a pretty dark game yeah yeah and you know at first you're just gonna get little hints here and there like something not quite right mm -hmm. you know and it unravels fast and gets really dark at times and it's uh it's challenging it even has a warning at the beginning of it and it makes sure that you know the kind of content that you're getting into which i appreciate i think that's a good thing but uh still this is one of those games that it will shock you and if you haven't played this yet don't watch any like let's plays or something mm -hmm. like that like just yeah, just go into it, but also read that warning. Make sure that you're good with it before you jump into this one because don't take it lightly. Yeah, experience it blindly, mm -hmm. then play it again. Yeah. And then play it again. <laughs> then then you'll find out more because yeah. there's, you know, and that's where... That's true. You will unravel the mystery that's going on. Yeah, and the plus version has even more uh, stories to mm -hmm. explore on it. And... Uh, I think they're a little bit happier stories actually it's more like a background on the characters and a background before you really came into the picture and that's what's so cool about this plus version because i think you get to see a little bit more of the positive side of the of these girls before we came in and things got dark and weird so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yep no i i think we both recommend this game that's uh... yeah absolutely Let's take a look at the next game here, and seemingly we're on this trend of cult classics here. We that's really are. Uh, kind of funny. <laughs> I don't think this was intentional, but yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, I guess those are the ones that came out on the Switch then. So this is Deadly Premonition Origins. Uh, welcome back to Green Vale. So I've actually not played this all the way through. I did start this, I played the prologue on Xbox. So this is essentially the port from the Xbox version, as far as I understand. So there's no, there's nothing new in here. There was a PS3 release that had like a director's cut. Hmm. So yeah, um, so I'll probably still play it on the Xbox and we have the physical for that too. Mm -hmm. But as you know, we really wanted to have this on the Nintendo Switch as well. And you know, yeah. just a different artwork and different title and everything, right? And you never know, we might want to play it on the go. Yeah, exactly. But I'm very excited to play this actually because so many people have talked about how good this game is and it's not so much about like the controls or you know it's it, you know to me from what i played this is kind of like a mix of alan wake and resident evil with that twin peaks vibe to it you know which i think is pretty obvious from you know the little i played of it 
However, I think this is the month where I'm gonna fully dive into this game and like try to like complete it. You have to do like multiple playthroughs and stuff just to see different endings. You pick up like trading cards and all sorts of weird stuff. But yeah, it's um, and it actually the fun fact about this one: this was a canceled PS2 game back in the day, and it was weird. called like Rainy Woods or something like that. And <laughs> You know, you could almost argue this game came out in 2010, I believe, first. So, it's um, it's not the best graphics. Supposedly has, like, really good writing and everything. And the story is, yeah, uh, obviously I can't spoil it because I haven't played it all the way through. But mm -hmm. it's one of those games that has to be experienced that I've heard. But, um, yeah, that's a good one to pick up on the Switch. And might be a little bit rare at this point, too. I don't know. I don't see that one... I will say in person very often at all. Mm -hmm. um, and then I haven't checked the price on that one in a while. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that was something I believe you bought yeah, this for me, right? Because, you, you know, yeah. I, mm -hmm. it's like it's one of those games that I know once I get into it, mm -hmm. it might become like a favorite. Like I said, it's a cult classic. A lot of people talk about this. If they say, hey, what's your favorite game on the 360 or a horror game or, you know, then they, they tend to say Deadly Premonition for some reason. Yeah. So, yeah, it is very interesting. Well, I'm glad they went with Deadly Premonition and not Rainy Woods because I think <laughs> that's a Woods. better name. <laughs> that's like the prequel to Alan Wake, I guess. Rainy Woods. So, Rainy you know. Woods. Uh, and, you know, why don't we just jump to the next yeah. one? And we don't have mm -hmm. any it. particular gameplay or anything, but, you know, here's the sequel, Deadly Premonition, A Blessing in Disguise. And this one only came out on the Nintendo Switch, I believe. So you'll definitely have to play that one on the Nintendo Switch then. Yes, this one I would have to because, you know, chances are that if I like that first one, then mm -hmm. I'm going to jump into this one. So, yeah, it's kind of similar to like Bayonetta. I feel like it's just kind of went to Nintendo, Nintendo, and then mm -hmm. it just didn't come out on anything else in the end. Yeah, but that's exciting. That's also a good purchase. This one, I think, is a little bit more rare as well. And again, I think I got that one for you yeah, for yeah. Christmas. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm encouraging. I'm trying to get you to come over to Nintendo Switch. More. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a great console, but I just uh, haven't fully invested in the handheld uh, that way, I guess. But That's still cool. love collecting for it, though. Yeah, me too. Next up is Yuppie Psycho. This is the executive edition. We talked about this in one of our previous videos because we actually picked this up in person from Video Game New York and they are the uh, publisher for this one. And we had, I think, bought this game digitally first for the Xbox because I had heard about it. I heard it's some kind of a workplace psychological horror game and it just looked interesting to me mm -hmm. and thought it would be a fun one you know for us to play and especially i thought you might actually want to play yuppie psycho and i think you did play a little bit of it so far i did and so far yeah it's it's very intriguing and um it's maybe another game that i'll play this month as well just play it all the way through and but this is a survival horror game but again it doesn't look like that at, at when you first start playing it but um yeah so this like you said we bought this from video games uh, new york they published this game and since then, since we were there, I've actually seen a few other YouTubers mention this and they order from Video Games New York online. So I guess we must have been late to the party. So yeah, <laughs> I guess we had no idea until we went there. But it was part of that experience, right? That we yeah. actually bought it up front. Like someone was telling us about this, uh, this game and what they publish. And I actually don't think they're going to publish a lot more um, going forward. Oh, so dang. this will probably be a pretty rare game eventually. Yeah. So. In that aspect, just because of what we've heard about the game and what we played so far, mm -hmm. I think it's one of those that it would be worth picking up now. Yeah. Uh, not just because it's uh, Shocktober, but because of the physical aspect and the collecting. Yeah, no, I think, and it's a, it's a great uh, looking game cover as well. It's hard to kind of capture it on here, but I think it does have a little bit of that metallic kind of a look to it, a little holographic. And so, no, definitely a really cool, you know, collectible. And it's also, yeah, it seems like it's going to be a good game, too. Yeah. Haven't gotten to the scary parts yet. Still still in the office. I think I just made some coffee and uh, <laughs> got some printer paper in the printer or something like that. So, yeah. Sounds <laughs> like another not... unassuming psychological horror. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I had no experience with this series before I played this game. 
That's Fatal Frame, Maiden of Blackwater. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you probably have something to say about the older Fatal Frame games, because I never played those. I did play this one, which came out on the Wii U first, which you can kind of tell, but I think they refined the controls a little bit for Switch and Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah, I think I was trying to get you to play a Fatal Frame game for years. I did play the one, the first one on the PS2 uh, years ago, and I think that they're, you know, they're super intriguing games. I love the stories that they they try to tell in these games, including this one here, but even with the first one uh, as well. And also, you know, uh, there's not a lot of games where you fight with your camera. So you feel pretty helpless. Yeah, I would <laughs> say you're you're very vulnerable in this game. And I um, yeah, I didn't know what to expect, really, because I'd seen you play. I think you booted up a um, Fatal Frame game on the PS2 and mm -hmm. it was just I, I and I, I was instantly drawn to it. I was like, oh, huh, I've never seen this before. And yeah, when this was, you know, remastered for Switch and PS4 and, and Xbox, then um, then yeah, I picked it up and I jumped in. I think it was Halloween last year that I started mm -hmm. this game and I did play it all the way through and uh, yeah, I, I can safely say, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this too, playing Fatal Frame, it's just like, yeah, you get attacked from multiple angles by these ghosts, and you have to do these, yeah, switch to camera sideways and do different shots, and it is, like you would say, a very unique game. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't typically get, you know, nervous in horror games, but this one was like, got my heart pumping a couple of times. It was, <laughs> it was like... That. You know, holy crap, like, I don't know where they're coming from, and I'm trying to adjust the camera and then move back, and <laughs> so, yeah, and I, I don't even know if this is considered to be one of the better ones. I'm sure it's not, like, by fans of the series, but mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed it. It was a little bit repetitive after a while, where you just had to go back to kind of your your home, <laughs> not your, your home base, base not mm -hmm. your home base, your, yeah. your room or whatever it was, and, yeah. and then you had to go back out to the mountain, and then... Mm -hmm. You kind of had to trek back through the same paths and then sometimes it took you to a different area but essentially it was i feel like it could have been a shorter game and then i i believe it would have been a classic i, I would have, i would have spoken mm -hmm. way way higher about this um but i still think it was a great entry for me at least because mm -hmm. then i can just easier play the older ones which i think we bought the um uh, lunar Eclipse, or I can't remember the full yeah. title, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse or mm -hmm. something like that. So we bought that one. Yeah. But um, don't think there's a physical for that one unless um, it's only... Oh, no, that's right. It's only Japanese version and like oh, an Asian right, yeah. version of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I would like to get that one in our collection, uh, just like we have this one. Yeah, this is well. the Asian version, mm -hmm. I guess. I think consider it is, consider yeah. That's why I think it doesn't there's have no a rating, on, rating it, yeah. on the front. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. And I think, you know, the one thing about these games that always surprises me, even back on the PS2, is just how good the graphics look on these mm -hmm. games for yeah. some reason. And I, you know, this game's like no exception to that. I know it is kind of like a remake from a Wii U game, like you said, but um, no, the, the quality of these games, they look really great. So it gives you that like better immersion into the game and the gameplay. And I will tell you, I don't think I made it very far in the PS2 version, even just because of like you said, you're so vulnerable. It's scary to be out there with a camera trying to kill ghosts with your camera angle. And mm -hmm. I just want to take out a gun and just like be like, just go away. But they're ghosts, so I can't shoot them. <laughs> well, you do damage and then you get different <laughs> shots. You get multiple ghosts in there and, you know, so. But then you have kind of mini boss fights and stuff like that. So I, yeah, I, it's, a, it's a very interesting game. So if, you know, if you never played Fatal Frame, this might be a good place to start actually on the Nintendo Switch because yeah. it. I, w I can imagine actually with the Wii U mm -hmm. that the Switch is actually better to play on yeah, than, than Xbox and it. PlayStation. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Yeah, so no, I, I I would recommend this game, and I'm considering playing the other one that was remastered um, from the Wii, I believe it was. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Cool. Yep. So in the middle of recording the next game, we had a bit of a situation here, but uh, we thought we would just leave it in because, yeah, <laughs> our cat decided to jump up here, and then as we were moving her, we got scratched up pretty badly. Um, Scroll got it worse than me, so um, for the rest of the video, we have a couple more games. 
I'm just gonna hold them up and we're just gonna talk about them. <laughs> so if you made it this far, this is real reaction right now, but <laughs> um, but yeah, we're okay. But this is a good time to ask for a like and a subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and then let us know in the comments if your cat has ever done that to you or while you're filming a Nintendo Switch video. <laughs> <laughs> Highly specific. Yes, but... very specific. And that then we know you made it this far into the video. That's so, right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have a next one here. And as you were saying before we were in uh -huh. rudely interrupted, <laughs> yeah. uh, there we have a collection here that you were going to present. And... Uh, uh, it's only the first game that's really considered a bit of a horror. Uh, it has a horror setting, you know, it's still mm -hmm. a shooter, but so this is the Bioshock collection. Yeah. And so far, I think I've only really played, I, I mean, I finished all of Bioshock, uh, the first one, and then I am in the middle of Bioshock 2. I haven't played the third one yet, but from what you've told me, yeah, it sounds like mainly just the first Bioshock really falls into the horror category. Maybe not for everyone, but I know for me it definitely does. Is it just you, you know, you feel like you're in a place that you have no idea how you got there. You don't know what's going on around you. You find these very creepy kind of people running around. They seem very aggro at you. They're <laughs> not happy with you at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it's uh, having played, this is one of my favorite series. So having played all three, yes, I can safely say the first one. It's not, like I said, it's not a horror game. Mm -hmm. It's still a shooter. Yeah. Um, but uh, you definitely have those elements of the creepy hallways. It's dark, right? You're trying to figure out what's going on in this underwater city. Yeah. And then you have these weird, like, humans, like you said, the splicers, which yep. they're kind of a little mutated, right? But mm -hmm. um, uh, the reason why I don't think the whole collection is a horror collection is because in the second one you play as a big daddy, mm -hmm. so you're more of a presence, right? You're not just a, a normal guy. Yeah. Um, and in the third one, you're you're in the sky so it's not it doesn't really lend itself for that setting it's a little little more open world sort of thing you know but uh still pretty linear uh but the first one yes i, I think i actually think a lot of people can agree that it has those horror elements that uh, you're looking for in that uh, type of game so um, oh, good it's not just me no no i no, i i think <laughs> it has jump scares and it has it tries to, you know, an, an example would it be it's trying to get you to go in one direction. You see maybe a shadow on the wall and then you get That's ambushed. True. You get ambushed from behind, you mm -hmm. know. So, yes, it's it's not like you have to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not a survival horror game, but it definitely has the action horror elements, I would say. But, yeah. you know, great game. This is a great value to pick mm -hmm. up on the Switch. And I don't know what this typically goes for, but um, has all the DLC, it has everything. And, yeah. you know, like you said. The first Bioshock is uh, considered the best one. Yeah, yeah, it's a great game. I loved it. And the last game we wanted to talk about, it's kind of a, it's a bit of a fun one for us at least. We've had some weird uh, experiences with uh, the series for the last few years and uh, anything including Halloween to birthday parties and stuff. <laughs> but uh, we saw this one at Target, I think it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Target, they sell it online too, but mm -hmm. this is Hello Neighbor 2, kind of like a uh, special edition here with some uh, backpack hanger yeah. in it. So we thought this one would be fun to add to our collection. And again, it's something we saw like when the game came out. And uh, like I said, we have some experience with this uh, game. I've played this second one. You haven't played this, haven't played but obviously one. we played the first one. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it's been a weird kind of like birthday party thing where a bunch of kids were like handing the controller around and playing like six kids playing this one game. Uh, and I was like, you know, I was like, guys, you know, you have like other games, right? You know, it's like they all wanted to like pass the controller around and see who could get into the neighbor's house yeah. undetected. I was like, it's it's. Sort of like a weird party game that they yeah, made it, it into that. They made so. it into that. And I mean, yeah, Hello Neighbor, the first one, I think we all played that yes. in the house. And so it was just a super, uh, that was, it, yeah, it was just one of those times where that game kind of took over the house for a bit when it was all that was talked about. We were all playing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're great games. I think that they um, have that stealth nature to it. Yep. You are, you know, running, you're hiding. And uh, I, there's been so many other versions now of Hello Neighbor that 
I feel like it kind of drowned out a little bit Hello Neighbor 2, whereas Hello Neighbor 2 should have been like a big, big deal. Mm -hmm. But they had those other hide and seek games and Secret Neighbor, Secret which Neighbor. we uh, secretly didn't like as much. Yeah. Or it was pretty exactly. open about it. But yeah, that was that was a different type of game, more yeah. of a multiplayer game. But mm -hmm. uh, but Hello Neighbor 2 is a, it's the same kind of thing, right? Like yeah. it's you know again <laughs> missing kids in the basements yeah. and whatever else, and then you're like. I think you were, um, if I remember, like you're a journalist trying to find a missing kid and you probably know what happens from there, you know, what happens next. It's just kind of, yep, you and have Hello to investigate this neighbor and yeah. And Hello Neighbor 2, I think, was more fantastical, it looked like, too, like with the house that you're exploring and the neighborhood. Yeah. They added more of a neighborhood as well to Hello Neighbor this, 2. Yeah, this is true. You actually have multiple houses you go to and get stuff before you go to the neighbor's house. And so I do think, and I, again, don't want to spoil this, and it's not that these have that much of a story, uh, to me at least, but, you know, you're trying to find a missing kid, but... Mm -hmm. I think it relates to the first game. Oh, okay. So it has more of a direct link to the first game That's rather cool. than the hide and seek. And, mm -hmm. you know, they all have the backstory of this guy. Mm -hmm. um, the but, you know, the neighbor, yeah. I mean, <laughs> again, it's. Uh, but yeah, like you said, it's a stealth game and has that creepy horror vibe to it, right? I think mm -hmm. it is still considered a horror game, but, you know, it's not. You don't have a lot to defend yourself yeah. with unless you count like a BB gun or throwing trash can lids at, uh, yes. at him. So yeah, I think this one is uh, still good to experience. Though, like it's just a slightly shorter game, I think too. But um, yeah, I think checking out if you haven't checked out the Hello Neighbor series, you know yet. I definitely yeah start with the first one and also check out Hello Neighbor too. Thanks for joining us as we did a little bit of a show and tell of the spooky games that we have in our Nintendo Switch collection. And we'll be doing more horror and Halloween themed games all month long. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider subscribing. And in the meantime, check out this video right here that Skrull made about weird and unique Nintendo Switch games. Thanks for watching. Until next time.